I think you're going to see components in Vegas game that you've already seen in each series. So there's a tremendous number of uh, similarities between Boston. Um, they also have then the dynamic offensive players, much like Toronto does, and, and some of the things they can do in small areas. And they do play a hard gap game like Carolina does. So in each of our three opponents, we will find pieces of uh, Vegas's game. Paul, what do you uh, what do you take um, going into a team? And you, you talked about this a little bit before the, the the way that this team has evolved in their six seasons and. Specifically, they brought in some over the over that time some high-profile guys: Stone, Eichel, Pietrangelo, who have all shown why they were so coveted. Uh, going, you know, when they when they acquired them. Yeah, they've added when you start, I guess, as an expansion team, and that now I think we have to look at the last two expansion teams quite a bit differently than maybe we did in the previous because it's a different set of rules and. They put a lot of very good players and yet had not necessarily added kind of that star power. And that's what they've done over uh, the last stretch of time. So they've added that top end that you don't get in an expansion draft, but you can still get clearly very, very strong players. And they've had a bit of time. I think you're going to see the same thing happen in Seattle over time. They put a really nice core together there. They've also drafted well and they've put them in. But you'll see that idea of, of reaching out to pick the one or two. I think. But it would be the advantage then is it's specific, right? They're not in, in um, they pick people specific to their needs. And so they've got a number one center, and, and that um, makes them so much deeper at center ice because they had good centermen, but they're, they're four skate so very, very well. Pure leader shooter kind of Mark Stone, you know, bring that driver into your room and then a number one defenseman. So they found their needs and filled them very well. Just on a personal level, how much do you enjoy just the, the idea of this matchup? Obviously, two Sunbelt teams, two newer franchises, two teams that have both never won a cup. Just the, uh, the, the outside perspective on yeah. this one. I, I, I probably haven't spent a lot of time talking about the story outside, except it's really fun to be here. Really, st I'm still, We're still in that mode. Um, excited about where we're at, the challenge. But I think at this point, we would say the opportunity that's ahead for both teams is exciting. It'll be the most pressure, but in, in a great way. Um, and I think a rightful culmination to the seasons, right? They beat three really good teams. We feel we have as well. I think both teams are pretty darn healthy. So the, the A players are in their lineup, and we'll get a, a best head-to-head -head matchup. Going back to Sam Bennett yesterday, obviously a guy that you know, 18 years old, plays one regular season game, and then suddenly he's right in the playoffs, and his game kind of already takes off there. What do you think it does for a player at 18 to kind of see the hardest level of the game so early? Obviously, I'm sure there's good and bad, but just to experience yeah. something like that at 18. The, uh, the playoffs cannot be explained, right? You need to experience it to understand it. And it'd be the same when you bring an 18-year-old and you say, you got to be in good shape. And then you get here and go, oh, okay, that's what you mean. And then you realize at 18, your body's not going to let you be in as good a shape as that 26-year-old who's been working since he's 18. And the same is for the playoffs. You can explain the difference in the game, the intensity, the physical, the, the, the emotional part, the emotional cost, the highs and lows of a playoff have to be endured and experienced for you to then put it into your game the next year. So you will change the way you train in the summer based on what you've learned, right? The... the those teams that are consistent, at the end of the day, they're good teams, but they're hard working teams because they figured that part out. Coach, with the limited opportunities in someone's career to play for a Stanley Cup, you have a couple guys on the team that have won. Have you seen these guys like a Stahl or a Hornfist or even a Carter or Hagee kind of talk to the rest of the team about the moment that yeah. they're about to enter? That's been part of our meetings. Those guys are great voices in the meeting and also the logistics of a final. So everything changes here now. Like. Tickets are, are an issue if they, you know, there's, there's people coming in from all over. There's, there's home, so many things that, that if, until you're there, you haven't experienced it. It's so much better if it's a player telling the stories. So much more impactful to them. Because they also, as players, have a completely different experience that we would or the other guys on staff who've been there. So their stories are really important. But I think what's more important is their excitement about it. Like, like, those guys you know, were flying on the ice yesterday. They are so they, they know how hard it is to get or how, how difficult it is to get to this point and they are taking it in and that's kind of the that's leadership, right? The guys around watching guys, you know, get up and down the ice excited, lots of energy. This is 
a fantastic time. I think we let you go a day without a Matthew Kachuk question yesterday, okay. so I'll, go, I'll do one We're today. Um, I'll double it up. Just talking about, like, obviously we've asked you a million times about the, all these clutch goals. Have you always kind of been a believer that there's, like, a clutch gene in hockey where it can be hard? You know, it's hard. It's not basketball where a guy can just demand the ball and take the game-winning shot. Like, Yeah, I mean, I, I think well, there's a clutch gene. But he's, as I said, like, he's done it before. I mean, it hasn't been to the final, but he was doing it all the time in Calgary Toss anyway, <laughs> and and he did it all the time during the regular season. I'll still go back to the goal in Washington with a minute left, how he finds a way to get off the wall and get that puck to the net. Right, those guys have it. Now in Matthew's case, it's because he's usually fairly close to the net. He's not afraid to go to those heavy areas. He'll take a puck to the net. He's very comfortable in that position. So he he's, he puts himself in a position to be a difference maker, and certainly he relishes it. Obviously, there's a lot of energy going into a game one. We've all seen what the fortress looks like night to night in the regular season, much less during a Stanley Cup final, what we've got coming up here. For your group, though, you know, going on the road for a game one could be daunting for a lot of teams, but you guys have gone on the road to start each of these series, and you've gone into tough environments we each have. time. How much can that bit of experience here over the last six weeks help you guys? It will help you just play the game because... Boston is a, is a big building and loud. Music's loud. Toronto has its own set of scrutiny there that, that makes it such a huge deal. And then Carolina is, you know, a, an incredibly loud building, and they've proven it over years. And the crowd gets going early and stays going the whole night. So it's good to have gone through places where, where the team can be affected by the energy of the crowd, and we've got experience with it. Coach, at the trade deadline, uh, your team made zero moves, and Bill Zito said he didn't want to quit on this group, didn't want to quit on the fans. What can you say of the vision that he had uh, despite what your team was going through uh, during that time? That time was still an opportunity to learn. We were still learning. And before you move people out or you bring in unknowns, there was, when you, when you think of it as a, as a path, not knowing when you get to your destination, but knowing that you have to stay on this path, we needed to see all these players go through it. And, 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 and they did for me, it was at the, by the All-Star break. That, those two weeks going into the All-Star break was the defining moment in our season. And that's true even if, if, if we had missed by two points. We, in that block of time that the schedule was incredibly difficult, there was, I mean, our gap, point gap, there was that pressure was on us, that playoff pressure. They had done it. So they had kind of proven, I think, to Bill that they had it wasn't a talent level thing that they had the the heart that they would fight through hard things that they and that's kind of what we were looking for at that point are the guys that just this is too hard for them but it wasn't the case and and they i think put bill in a good position to say it wasn't the idea there of, hey let's not make any changes because if we don't we'll win the stanley cup that that's not the idea it was okay we're still on the path that we started with it's been a bit of a rocky path but we're still on it we have to stay on this path we we, we can't I mean, any of the players that you would think might be available that, or would have become available based on contracts or all the things that go into it, when you become a selling team, oh my God, those guys have been important to us right now, critically important to us. So it was, it was the right call by management to, to let these players continue to grow together. Paul, well, just a couple of, first off, the league has kind of become, you know, Three line, a lot of a lot of teams play three lines. Their fourth line <clears throat> is spotted in there. Right. You you two teams now. This is a little bit of a rarity because you, both you and Butch are not afraid to play your fourth lines, even in even yeah. in overtime. From a coaching standpoint, how does that change? You know how your your matchups and things like right. that when you're not going up against a coach who's trying to get his offensive yeah. players in the, uh, for face-offs in the offensive zone all the time and things like that. Yeah, well, f first, it's you have to have a certain amount of structure in your lines to be able to do it. You do have to have the depth to be able to do that. And then, and I feel, I would say, I feel the same way about this series in terms of matchup as I did against the Boston series, because Nosek would come out against any of, any of them. Um, and... The same last night, their fourth line starts the periods, right? They'll play any of them. So it's about shift length as much as anything. I don't think either one, neither team is going to fight for a matchup 
they may have a matchup in mind, but you're not pulling somebody off the ice to get it, or you're so afraid of that line that you start. It's not that long ago. I mean, well, the most extreme version of this is Anaheim. That pulled. I mean, it was the hardest match you'd ever seen, and they just pulled lines off all night long. I think that's gone. You've got two teams that have, have had success to get here with all four lines. I mean, Lombard scored a big goal. Stoll, Stoll scored a big goal early in the year. Dalpies had a big goal. Whitey's played very well. They'll all play. And, and I think it makes for way better hockey. I think you get way heavier, harder, faster hockey that way. And uh, on another note, um, he doesn't get a lot of publicity outside, outside of maybe this market here, but uh, can you talk about the, the significance of Forsling and what he's meant to your back end? Well, he plays on our number one pair, and everybody in that role has the exact same job. You play against the, the single best players in the world every single night, and it's every game, right? There's, there's at no point. I think, I think going back to almost relating it to your earlier question, the D matchup will be much harder, right? They'll find the, 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 the A line. Um, and that's what he's done. But it's more than that because he's come into this group like a lot of other players, not necessarily as the first-round pick, or I guess we do have a few of those too, but players that were needed their opportunity to come and then valued that opportunity. Like, he works incredibly hard. He, he, he does not miss games. He's been banged up this year a whole bunch of times and just won't come out of the lineup and drives through it. So you have these players in the room that are kind of very thankful and they also value their opportunity. They don't come to the rink and say, hey, what's the team going to give me? It's these guys gave me a chance. I'm going to I'm going to pay it back every shift. 